It's been a while since we've talked about Erin Williams. She has a lot going on in her life. Let's talk about it. I'm sure most of you know Erin is now in Colorado with her mom. She does not have a nanny, and she's officially a homeschool mom. And as soon as she decided to be a homeschool mom, she started ordering supplies right away. I feel like this is what influencers do. They love the shopping aspect of changing something in their life. Whatever they're changing, their makeup, they're deciding to homeschool, maybe they're redoing their bedroom. Influencers get paid to shop. If they shop and buy something, then they can link it influence you to buy it, and then they make money from shopping, essentially. Nowadays, influencers are linking things they don't even purchase. Influencers have finally reached a point of saturation. They can't buy any more stuff, so now they just link to things they want you to buy, but they don't even own them, lol. Since Erin closed her influencer boutique, Pecos Princess, a few months ago, she's been linking things like crazy on Instagram. She even does this thing where she links everything she purchased for the previous month. And if you're wondering if I clicked on that affiliate link, no, I did not fully click on the link, but someone on Reddit did, and this is what they had to say about it. She has a severe shopping addiction. She also spent $2,000 in September on Amazon. Now she's got Christmas coming up to buy for. It it boggles my mind how much influencers make, and I'm sure it's even more than I realize. It's crazy how much products are marked up and how many people get a cut out of everything we buy. She is what's wrong with this country, and her way of life is absolutely disgusting to me, and her job is to influence others to buy, buy, buy like her. Disgraceful. Someone mentioned she'll need a trailer to get all of her purchases home. Like, who buys that much shit living in a temporary location out of state? How is it all getting home? Or is it just going off to the landfill? The queen of wasteful spending. What do you mean? She only spent $5,000 on Amazon in October. That's totally within budget. $5,000? She could have rented an Airbnb and kept her girls in school or hired an interior designer. Not only does she post her monthly spending of her purchases on Amazon, but she thinks this somehow makes her relatable to her audience. 100% overconsumption at its finest. Let's actually talk about some products that I really love. This comment is from a viewer not directed right at Erin Williams, but just directed at influencers in general. The link of products right now is frustrating. Most are fast fashion. Maybe invest in things that will last. Less is more. I cannot with these people. So shallow. Fake hair, fake nails, fake, fake, fake. All the while, a lot of folks are struggling hard very hard to provide for their families. The gas these influencers put in their luxury SUVs weekly could feed a family of four for a week or at least cover two-thirds of the food bill. If you're on TikTok, I'm sure you've seen some of the TikToks about castor oil. Erin decided to jump on that train. Castor oil has been trending on TikTok now for a while, so she was a little late to jump on the castor oil train, but she went out and bought everything. She bought the castor oil, the castor oil packs, as you can see from this picture. Of course, she linked everything, and I think the next day or so, she came back on Instagram and said castor oil was making a sty come up on her eye, and you guys know she's had a lot of problems with styes and her eyes, so she said that did not work out for her. I get it. As women, we want to try different beauty tips and tricks and all of these things. But I think influencers sometimes buy products, especially trending products, just so they can link them and make money off of it, even if they don't really intend on using this product for a long time or even a short period of time. I just, I'm unhinged. That's what it is. I'm unhinged. I've been an Erin Williams follower for years. The whole whiplash experience is killing me. I cannot even take her seriously anymore. There has been a recent shift in Erin's content. I'm sure you've noticed. And don't let this picture fool you. She's not joining OF. At least, not that I know of. But recently, so many mommy vloggers are going over to OF. Erin claims she wants to post positive and uplifting content for her viewers. Within this year and recently, I decided that like my goal on my all of my platforms literally like is just for one reason and it's to uplift, inspire, make people smile, make people laugh and be a place where they can come and they don't have to worry about getting bombarded with everything that is on the news and that is going on horrifically in the world. Erin goes on to say a lot of people want to go to their favorite influencers page to see them do beautiful makeup or talk about being a mom or 
talk about shopping because it gives them that mental escape. So leave a comment right now and let us know why you go to your favorite influencers page and what do you get out of it? And what keeps you going back to that influencers page for more content? I think it'll be interesting to read everybody's perspective on this. So leave a comment. That is a change that you have seen probably and will continue to see. The biggest change I've noticed in Erin's content lately is she no longer talks about political issues. That's been completely deleted from her content. I haven't heard her talk about politics or anything going on in the news in a while. She's still being snippy with her viewers. A viewer said, don't mess with your natural beauty. You're great as is. Erin replied, my whole face is fake because of Botox and having my lips done. Sounds like someone is jealous they don't have any. Erin's response is the typical influencer response. Most influencers think viewers are just jealous of them. Erin shared this reel. She wrote on the stories, homeschool parents are weird. This right here is irreversible. And it's a reel of a group of elementary school age kids walking down the hall and the teacher, I'm assuming this is the teacher, gets in the kid's face and corrects the kid by yelling or intimidating the child. I'm not 100% sure about what happened in the reel, but just by watching the body language, this was horrible. It was horrible to watch. And this type of content can be extremely triggering for some people. Just like in every career, there are bad people. I'm an educator and in 11 years, I've never seen anyone act this way. This is not the norm and I hate that she's playing into the bash public schools agenda. Most families cannot afford to homeschool, so it's a privilege she can even consider it. Don't bash what the majority of this country uses to educate their kids. Not very American, is it? This, I'm also an educator and I've never seen these actions. Also, Erin posted this picture of her girls. She thinks she's Kris Jenner and all of her girls are one of the Kardashians. Do you think she has plans to put her kids out in the spotlight and be their momager? Or do you think she's just doing this for, you know, attention, engagement, and to get people talking? Because we all know Erin does that. She just says things just to say them, just to get attention. Hi, so confession, sometimes I leave a mean comment up on my reel or any post just to see how many people like it um, so that I know who needs to be blocked. And she writes in the description of this Instagram reel, thanks for falling into my trap, you little snakes. It kind of sounds like a low key threat in the nicest way, right? Trying to be funny about it, but still kind of threatening people. If you like a comment, I'll block you. And Erin is known on social media for blocking people. I bet she has thousands and thousands of viewers blocked. When an influencer threatens to block a viewer these days, I feel like it's not a big deal. There's so many different websites you can use to view their account anonymously. You can also create a fake account. So who cares if you get blocked? Let's read a few of these comments. You're playing games just like your viewers. That's mature. Erin said, this is my house. Denise. Looks like Denise learned nothing from this post. There was nothing intelligent to learn. I'll keep trying though. Erin responded again. This is today's bait comment. You do this under a different account? Erin said no. For example, someone leaves a rude comment. I could either leave it up or block them. Sometimes I'll leave it up because other people like their comment, which I think is a snake in the grass move. So I block the people who like the original mean comment. This is sinister, not gonna lie. Engagement is engagement. Erin said yes. When my reels get to a certain level of comments, I can't keep up with it. So it's whatever at that point. But on smaller ones, I'm like, let's play a game. A user on Reddit said, how does she have time to reply to so many comments, post a million stories a day, etc. while she's supposed to be taking care of the girls, homeschooling? Girl, get off your phone. I think now more than ever, parents are distracted more than ever because of the phones, because of technology, and Erin's an influencer, so her job is on her phone, so she's more distracted than just the average stay-at-home mom. Aaron said, my biggest regret is not realizing all of this sooner. I chose to hustle and have nannies. No offense to our wonderful nannies. Dumbest shit ever. I could have been a full-time mom from the start. So Aaron is a full-time mom now. That's what she calls it. She doesn't have a nanny. She's been without a nanny the entire time. She's been in Colorado. She's really been without a nanny since the mold stuff happened. The nanny left just before all of that went down. Because when the nanny left, Aaron started spending more time in her home. Home, and she started getting sicker because of it. 
which led her to dig deep and figure out what was going on. Erin's had a nanny for years. She hasn't been a full-time stay-at-home mom in a very long time. Two of Erin's daughters have had injuries within the last two months. Erin posted this picture on Halloween and said, my daughter had an eventful Halloween. As you can see, she fractured her wrist horse playing, but she's powering through. A few days after Erin posted that to Instagram, she came back on Instagram to let everyone know Nick took her daughter to the doctor and they found out it was not a fracture. It was something else and I can't remember what she called it, but the child still suffered some type of injury to the arm. And Erin's youngest child was injured. She had a cast on her arm before they left to go to Colorado. Erin got on Instagram to let everybody know it was her fault. She seemed really upset about it and said it was completely her fault. The child fell and had to have a cast. I don't understand why mommy influencers get online and talk about their kids' injuries. I've heard some influencers say, well, you're going to see the cast and wonder what happened, so I might as well go ahead and explain to viewers. Well, if they didn't use their kids in their content, viewers would never see these things, so we would never have questions and we would never ask what happened. Aaron's daughter broke her arm at the end of August due to Aaron's parental negligence. Now it's the end of October and her other daughter broke her wrist. Imagine this happening under a nanny supervision. Any parent would second guess the attention attention and care being given to the children under the same circumstances. Erin's indifference towards the well-being of her girls in order to focus on her Instagram presence is painfully obvious to half of her children now. I loved how she made the youngest daughter's incident a huge deal and a whole spill about how it happened, but this time she quickly said rough play and moved on. This post isn't about you or any other moms who have children with broken bones. The judgment is about Erin and the judgment is because we all know Erin is on her phone 24 seven and more worried about showing strangers how she makes coffee every day, posting links to anything she can make three cents off of, showing people her beauty routine, or doing her influencer finger tap on every damn coloring book or journal she buys for homeschooling. Then she is about being a parent who is present and making sure her kids are safe. There's always a lot going on with Erin Williams. That's the update for today. I'll have another Erin Williams video out soon, so stay tuned for that. But what do you think about everything? Tell me in the comments. Thanks for watching YouTuber Headlines. I'll see you soon in the next video.